Okay. So first slide introductions. I'll go first. My name is Kiana. I'm going into my junior year at DHS. Um, I've been on the Speech and Debate team doing public forum since ninth grade, which is the first year you can officially like join the DHS Speech and Debate team. And other hobbies, I play soccer at the high school and for Davis Legacy. And I play the violin, so yeah. Um, I'm Veronica. I'm going to be an incoming 11th grader, and I've been on the team as long as Kiana, so since ninth grade, and I play badminton and the piano. Good. So here's some guidelines before we start. Please don't talk while we are speaking. If you have a question, just put it in the chat, and probably Veronica will answer or we'll talk over it. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions because I remember when we were first learning, the girl that was teaching us just went super fast and we didn't understand any of it by the end of like the hour. Thanks, Kenneth Wang. Um, so please just ask questions if you're confused because someone else probably has the same question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so intro to public forum. Oh, to PF, it stands for public forum and the debate consists of two two-person team. Veronica, you can take the uh, so, rest. So basically you're given a topic and you'll be, you have to write two different arguments. So one that's pro and one that's con. Um, and you will on the spot be given like which one you're going to be doing and arguing for. Um, and you have to use logic and analysis to like support your argument. And you have to support it all with like evidence that you find online or in books. And then you're gonna wanna present a variety of arguments so you have a better chance of your opponent not thinking of that argument. And if they didn't think of it, then they can't take it down. And then we're gonna go more into the specifics, but you're also going to have to think of what arguments your opponent is going to say and think of. And you're gonna want to find evidence to counter and logic to counter those arguments. And lastly, you're just gonna wanna say your ideas and talk with clarity organization, eloquence, and overall professionalism. Um, yes, we are doing a practical of this at the end of the presentation. Okay. Um, so the time brackets, this is just a setup of like how long you're given to um, give your argument. So the first speaker will be the one to present the argument. So all your contentions, basically all your points that supporting which side you're given. Um, the first speaker will be given four minutes and then the person on the other team will be given four minutes and then crossfire is three minutes. So crossfire is basically where um, it's a one on one. So you're able to ask each other questions like clarifying questions or questions to basically prove them wrong or prove that they can't prove you wrong. And then after that is rebuttal, which is, you know, you just like counter argue the first speakers, the first speaker on the other team and all their points. And then you do a crossfire with the rebuttal people. And then Kiana can do summary. And then summary. So Veronica and I, you know, it's teams of two. Veronica and I are partners. And so I'm usually first speaker. She's usually second speaker, which means she does rebuttal. I do the first speaker um, and just like stating our contentions. Um, so then I'm, since I'm first speaker, I'm gonna do summary. And summary, in summary, basically, you just summarize the whole debate, like, oh, to, to review our contentions are this, our opponents stated this, my partner uh, refuted their contentions by using this evidence and this logic, and our impact still outweigh theirs because, and so you kind of go over the whole debate and tell the judge why you are still right and why your argument still stands. And so after I say my summary, whichever team I'm on, either AF or NEG, then um, the other team, let's say I'm AF, then the NEG first speaker. Oh, and AF is affirmative and NEG is negation. So affirmative, you're you know, pro your topic and negation, you're going against it. So after I speak, if I'm AF, I'm speaking first and then negation is gonna have their summary speaker speak. And then grand crossfire is the same thing as crossfire, but it's gonna be two on two. So all four people on in the debate are gonna be speaking or are gonna be able to speak at the same time. So this one's 
a bit more fun than Crossfire because let's say they ask me a question that I don't know how to answer, then Veronica can answer or I ask them a question. And so it's the same as Crossfire, but you and your partner can both ask them questions. And during individual Crossfire, you are not allowed to like consult your partner like mid debate, like while being asked a question or else like you'll get in trouble for that. So like don't talk to them or like give them answers. Okay, and then for final focus, which is the second speaker, it's basically um, just like a final like summary, but mostly you're, you want to repeat your contentions and like to really like pack a punch and remind the judge like what your points were and then also repeat like the points on the other team that you tore down. So like you just say like, oh, this is their first contention, this is their second contention, and this is why like I proved them wrong. So that like the judge can weigh who had the most arguments standing at the very end of the debate. And then they're gonna do the same thing. And then, oh, and then that's the end of the debate. And then prep time. So each team gets three minutes that they can request. So basically in total, you could possibly have six minutes of prep time. Um, but like you can only request like personally for your team three minutes in total and they'll just time you. And then you use up out like how many you need. And then if you say have like one and a half minutes left of prep time, you can use that later on in, in the debate. And prep time is basically just for, because for the summary and final focus, you're writing that during the debate. Your uh, contentions and rebuttal, you find those all before the debate. But summary and final focus, you're actually writing what you're going to say, or if you can just remember it, but that's kind of hard. You're writing your points during the debate. So that's what prep time is for. Like, hey, judge, we're going to take a minute and a half of prep time and then you and your partner can just work on what you need to write and what you need to finish for the debate so yeah okay so here are just examples of resolutions and the resolution is just like what you guys are going to debate about um so some of them that veronica and i did this is our first one the united states federal government should impose price controls on the pharmaceutical industry so it's like this, you know, for uh, a for if you were asked, we'd be like, oh, yeah, they should impose price controls because without price controls, then pharmaceutical companies are just going to bring the price up. That means poor people, poor sick people who don't have the money, they're just going to keep getting lower in health and they're going to keep dying and the rich are keep getting richer. And then for NEG, you'd be like, no, we shouldn't have price controls because what did we say? I don't know. We said something, Veronica. But yeah, so that was our first one. And then you can talk about this one, Veronica, the second one. So the United States should replace means-tested welfare programs with a universal basic income. That was our, our most recent debate that we went to in Berkeley. And basically it's, so this is an example of like a way, like a, a situation where you would probably want to propose a new plan, like a, like a, like a suitable plan that would like be better than what, like, so there's means tested welfare in the United States. And if you're neg, you would want to be like, you would want to say universal income is, I don't know, if you're pro, you would want to say basic income um, would be better. So you might want to like say like, oh, here's like a certain plan and here are the numbers and why it would work out, but you can't do that. That's not allowed in, um, in PF, in public forum debate. And so, like, you would just have to work with what you can find online, like, existing programs for universal basic income. Okay. And you can continue, Kiana. And then the this third one, the benefits of the United States federal government's use of offensive cyber operations outweigh the harms. That one was our, like, second debate. And see, something like that, you know, it's not all about, like, money and lives. It's more about, like, government terms and cyber operations so for something like that you really want to prepare like you know as soon as the resolution comes out the resolution usually comes out like two months before eight or so maybe a month and a half and so something like that you really want to know your terms and prepare because i guarantee you a lot of these teams are going to prepare in advance and even if they're not the strongest speakers they're going to have a lot of preparation and so they're just going to kind of school you and you're going to be like, I'm confused. So that one was kind of a hard one because we didn't prepare and we definitely should have. And then just some other ones that I found uh, for public forum debate in the past like year or two, the United States federal government should prioritize reducing the federal uh, can't read that, debt over promoting economic growth. 
and the United States should require universal background checks for all gun sales and transfers of ownership. So yeah. Okay, so here are some tips uh, for preparing. If you want to be a PF debater, number one, definitely, since you guys are, I mean, most of you guys are all going to are in novice, which is just like beginner. Um, definitely be confident, even if you're not 100% sure of what you're talking about or what you're saying. Uh, for novice, and I think probably Barcy too, um, in the earlier rounds, the judges are parents. And so a lot of the time, they won't really understand what you're saying, or, you know, some of them won't really care too much. But if you're confident, and if you're more confident than the opponents, then they're going to be like, oh, she or, she or he knows what they're talking about. So definitely just speak with confidence and be confident in what you're saying. Uh, one second, we have a question. So um, they're asking, are there certain sources you use for your argument, or is it a free-for-all when it comes to sources? So. Um, there aren't like a list of sources that you're only allowed to use, but like you should use like the most reliable sources you can find and like, because they're going to ask you for your sources and like who wrote it and like what are their credentials. And, and so for public forum, the hierarchy of sources is peer reviewed journals and research from research universities. Uh, where they do studies and the outcome of the study benefits what you're talking about. Because when you say a Harvard study to anyone, there's instant credibility. Does that make sense? And then a trusted news source, New York Times, Washington Post, a newspaper. And then a cable news channel or website like CNN or MSNBC or NPR. And then, and that's the hierarchy I do. If you use, you can use CNN or NPR but if you can use a source like the Washington Post or the New York Times or like a Harvard Law Review journal, that's better. Um, and I'll link in the chat a, like a custom Google search engine that only searches think tanks. So you can utilize your research that way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Luca. And then, so which point were we on, Kiana? Oh, we're on prepare a lot in advance. Oh yeah, so you want to prepare a lot in advance because, so you'll get the um, topic about like about a month or two before like an event happens, like a, an event. Um, it's really helpful to like get to know your topic in like beforehand and like to really like prepare all of the points that you think could possibly be made because you'll encounter like a lot of unique points that you aren't ready to like um, argue against or if you can prepare like points that are really hard to argue against that like really benefit you in the middle of a debate. Um, and then, uh, Kiana? Um, and then be professional to opponents and judges. So yeah, you're gonna want to like wear professional clothing, which is basically just like, like a nice like black like dress or like a, you know, like a button up shirt. Or I don't know what guys wear, but, um, and then, uh, I remember at Santa Clara kept telling us that like eyes and ears are everywhere so don't like make fun of your opponents or your judges or anything like while you're just walking in tournaments because judges you don't you know they just look like parents so they're just sitting everywhere and they can hear you and they can definitely just like fight you on that um, so yeah you're gonna want to be professional like you know shake their hands when they come to the table you're debating that shake the judges hands um, but then stay friendly, you know, don't be like cold. Um, but then also don't kiss up to the judges because I find that the judges get kind of annoyed if you're like super, super like, ha, ah, oh my gosh, you know. So, yeah, just be professional and friendly, but not too friendly. Um, our next point is you should, it's really important, you have to speak clearly and like loud enough for the judge to actually hear you. Because a lot of the cases, the, like, judge is a parent judge, and if they, if you're talking way too fast, or you're, like, talking, like, too low, and, you, like, they can't hear you at all, then they're not going to get your points, and they, like, they're not going to ask for it, usually. So, then that's just a missed opportunity for you to, like, really, like, hammer in what your arguments are, and even if your arguments are, like, really good, if they can't understand you, they're not going to be able to write them down and, like, use that as a way to decide if you win or lose. Um, and then you should also clearly outline your arguments while you are speaking. So you want to like list them out like clearly and put a lot of emphasis on, oh, this is contention one. 
and like the numbers, especially on like, the evidence you have. Um, and also like, you want to repeat them like constantly because like sometimes the judge won't hear you like the first time or sometimes like they'll just forget. It's really easy to just like, you know, forget like a certain point, even if it's really good. So you just want to remind them like, this is the main point I'm trying to make. And like, this is why it's still standing. And like, this is my argument. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, oh. oh, I wanted to interject one more time. Um, there's something called voter issues. So that's the idea of like, if, so like in the context of a debate, if you were to win the debate, this is how you would win it. So you explain clearly to the judge the specific reasons in the rebuttal why they would vote for you. So like these are the issues that the round comes down to and this is why we win. Mm -hmm. So like that's um, what they – that's the jargon they use to talk about clearly outlining and repeating the rebuttals. Yeah. So just in case someone says the word voter issues in a round and you're confused, that's what it means. Yeah, thank you, Luca. Um, and then you're going to want to create a variety of rebuttal cards and just overall like unconventional arguments. Because again, if a rebuttal card is basically just like a, an excerpt that you use to rebut one of your opponent's arguments, they just call them cards. Um, so you'd want to do this because your, your opponent is probably going to think of many different arguments. So with a variety of rebuttal cards, then you'll be ready to actually rebut their uh, like speaking points with actual evidence and not just like off the top of your head. Oh, they're wrong because uh, and then you want to make unconventional arguments because obviously then you're going to want to hope that your opponent won't have arguments to be or won't have like facts to overthrow yours. And but then lastly, conventional to like for the sake of making them crazy like make them like kind of you, you don't have to make all of them unique but like try to like like find a different way to go around like the like common arguments but like if it's weak don't use it that's not yeah just unique. try to throw like one unique one in there you know just so you have something to lay back on if your arguments get totally destroyed but yeah and then lastly, you're just gonna wanna coordinate with your partner. Like Veronica and I are really good friends. So like after school, we just go to the library and work on our debate together. But you definitely wanna know what each other are saying. You wanna know what you're saying, obviously, but also what your partner is saying, because they will ask you like in Crossfire, they'll be like, oh, your partner said this, like what's their evidence for this? And you'll be like, uh, uh, did they? I don't know. So definitely just know what the other person is going to say. Okay, so uh, we're going to put you into breakout rooms and then the resolution is one of the ones that we've used before and so we took some of our articles that we used for this um, debate and we put them on here and so I'm going to separate you into breakout rooms of two and then I will come in and tell you if you're AF or NEG. Can you do that? Can you paste the um the links into the chat so they can oh click yeah um i can do that um i have a question um what are some don't what should, are some things in these duos you should not do like like absolute do not do this like things you should avoid doing to make your performance better um, you should avoid like stuttering in, while you're reading your debate. So you should really like reread and practice um, your contentions and your rebuttals. And so it's just like, don't look unconfident when you go up there is a big thing. And always like know what you're saying. So don't just say something that's like completely from your mind that you don't understand. You have to understand what your argument is because they're going to like try to tear you apart. So you just have to like know how to like navigate around questions and prove yourself right every time. Um, a major thing is if you make a like mistake when it comes to speaking, like you say the wrong thing or you have a stumble, never apologize because that just points out in the judge's mind you made a mistake. So like, I know it's human error to be like, oh, I said this word wrong, sorry, while you're speaking. Don't do that, never do that. 
that's the one major thing that I see a lot of people who are new to debate do in round and it hurts them. Like that can cost you a round at certain points. So just be careful of that and cognizant of that. Doesn't matter if you make a mistake, just don't like magnify it. Yes. Um, so this is like, we're debating a plan like the US federal government should impose um, like the price controls. So it's like a yes or no thing. We can't like create a plan or a counter plan for that. Yeah, exactly. Cause like in policy, you know, you, I think you, uh, you want to create a plan, but in PF that's not allowed. They will, the other team will call you out on that. If you're like, well, for price controls, we can do this much on these pharmaceuticals. That's not allowed. And they're going to point it out to the judge and that's severely looked down upon. So yeah, you have to avoid that. There are tricks you can do in rounds I've judged where they, you know, construct a plan without specifying it, but you can't mm -hmm. have a outline plan clearly. Yeah. So you like, you can like use definitions or something to. Yeah. Or, or, or you can bring up an example of a possible plan that is being debated. So like, for instance, your AF plan can just be the UBI, like let's say we're debating UBI mm -hmm. can be like the freedom dividend and you mm -hmm. reference Andrew Yang's freedom dividend in, yeah. in your case. That's and that's did, yeah. the overarching like policy that you're weighing the round under, but you are, it's all like parlay or policy where you're like, we affirm this is a policy round. Here's the policy. Here's the plan. Mm -hmm. Here's the actor. It isn't like formal like that, if that makes okay. sense. So you like slip in a current plan that's already proposed yeah. and like talk about that specific one. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, do, what should we do if we can't hear something our opponent says clearly? Um, um, oh, go for Luca. Sorry. Um, so the first thing I would do is just make a note of it and then ask them to clarify and cross. That's the most polite way to do it. Um, and then also, if you couldn't catch it, most likely the judge couldn't catch it, so I wouldn't worry about it. Is there like a particular way you flow in PF, or is it just... Like Same way as any other debate event. Okay. Okay, I think we're all good. Okay, well, thank you guys for coming, anticipating. You guys did very well. So. I hope you guys join PF. We don't have enough PF kids at DHS. We're literally the only ones right now. So please join. It'll be really fun. You have a great time, um, even though it's online now. But. So okay, thank you for coming. And bye. 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 <laughs>